Okay, cool. So to get started today, um, I wanted to share a thought that we had during our um, team sync uh, last Friday. Um, and I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts and hear on it too. Uh, in general, uh, we feel like we're actually getting some pretty good traction and we got some compliments on um, the discussions and posts that have happened over the past couple of weeks. So because I think our uh, um, like kind of power user incentive program is actually sort of working. I know, Anton, you've done a lot of really good stuff. So um, it's definitely getting noticed. Uh, but with that being said, um, we've had kind of like the uh, dictate from on high that the quality of the website is not high enough and that we need to uh, start implementing some type of programs in order to hit a higher quality bar with their new feature releases. So we have a couple of plans to do that that we can run past you guys. But in the kind of first thing I'd like to ask is like, what do you all think about the quality of the website so far when it comes to like bugs and like being able to like understand how new features work? Um, do you agree that the, the quality could be higher? Just kind of curious to take a general temperature on that. I think it's, you know, it's good enough to be, to be honest. Like I, maybe, maybe it's my bias because, you know, as in open science, we frequently use these products that are, you know, unfinished or like tested on us basically because it's so new. But this one, I think it's very serviceable. Like I can do anything I want on, on the website as it is right now, to be honest. What do you mean by quality? That's great to hear. Does, does it... What do you mean by quality? Uh, so one example is sometimes when we release new features, um, people have issues like signing in with like the Google sign in. I know Nick, um, when he first started to use the website, um, like had some issues like actually like like joining. And so he like joined the Slack group and then messaged us and we were able to to fix those wrinkles. But it, it's kind of an issue if we were to um, try and uh, be used by a wider audience. Like if we were to make a partnership with like a medical school or something and say, hey, all of your researchers should use Research Hub. Like if 30% of people have issues signing in, it kind of uh, reduces confidence in the application. So, so kind of like small issues um, that might pop up, I think is kind of what we're hoping to uh, wrinkle out perfectly. Yeah, I guess I would expand on that more so of like when you're using the site, do you feel like, oh, there's something I wanna do that I can't do or like, oh, there's a bug or like, oh, if the site feels unfinished, you know, like parts of the site don't feel completely finished. Um, like, do you guys have that feeling sometimes? I mean, I I do, but it's not, you see, it's hard to, de, you know, distinguish it from the software development perspective to like the feature development perspective. Like right now, you know, we, we are gonna discuss uh, the bounty system, right? And there is no, there is no, the, the site is not equipped to handle this right, kind there's of- There's no bounty, yeah, right, right. right. But, but it's but not I would because, say, but it's right, not what I would say is like, bad. right, when yeah. you're when you're using the website, is there, are there moments where you where you feel like, oh, the website is buggy, let's say. Like there's some, like either it's loading too slowly or like there's some, when you click on something like, oh, we, an error happens. Like, do you guys feel like, this is happening and if it is do you feel like it's happening often yeah originally it was a couple of weeks ago that um, i tried to uh sign in with chrome and it wasn't working uh and then i tried it last week as well and it also like the sign in with google was grayed out but um I've been mostly using it on on Safari, which is in my my browser of choice, uh, but it works well there. So I'm not I'm not sure if that's that's been looked at or if it's been um, if it's still the case. Yeah. With Chrome. Um, I have, yeah. Do you have like a ad blocker or some kind of thing on Chrome? Um, uh, I mean, like I blocking to use JavaScript. Incognito, maybe that's it. Uh, yeah, but, it, it doesn't work in incognito. Yeah, that's a known issue. 
the signing doesn't work in the incognito. Uh, and I, I've, I've also had the same issue just uh, with regular Chrome, not incognito. Yeah. So I think it's it's more widespread. Any other kind of uh, thoughts on that side? Yeah, when I use the uh, Chrome browser, it lags quite some time. Um, when I uh, you just click on a uh, on a paper, it takes some time to load. And it's not like uh, that kind that big kind of a problem, but it doesn't look like um, yeah. I have to say, like there's put that much work into everything, but it looks like uh, it's still. Yeah, it still needs a lot of work because it has lags. Uh, the servers are maybe not running uh, quite up to speed and stuff. Yeah, how 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 much lag do you usually get? Is it like more than a couple seconds, like four seconds, five seconds, six seconds? Like yeah, seconds? yeah. Sometimes it's more than five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. It's probably because of the the active features that makes the text. Right, it, I think it's it looks really complicated on the processing and connection, you know. Yeah. Like if yeah. you open if you open a, a page and there is no text in this format that you can right. edit, then it's really fast. Yeah, this is a known issue that we're we're gonna clean up in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. It also feels like the the PDF, the paper PDF at the very bottom of the page, it's like rarely anything. Most of the time, it's just an error message for me yeah yeah maybe we'll just, rem just remove too. it for now yeah yeah because we're, we're trying to link to other people's sites and mm -hmm. some people don't like that and then they don't allow us to do so so no yeah. maybe if you can get rid of the preview the preview itself right. is if it's like an error yeah 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 So our overall plan for the next four weeks is to really try and clean up some of the functionality and uh, reduce some of those lag times. So um, one thing we would like to do, if you guys are interested, is uh, any bug you report on the GitHub uh, issues, the public discussion forum, we'll send you 50 RSC. So the idea is like anytime anything comes up where you're even the tiniest bit annoyed, like it's taking too long, like uh, you can't download the PDF, just throw it into the GitHub issues, and um, that'll help us really create a list of everything that we could possibly fix and try and, on the other side of this month, have a product where everything's super snappy and works as you expect it to, like 99% of the time. Can you, I think it would be really helpful if you could uh, write like a f just a few paragraphs for people who have never used GitHub, like how, maybe, maybe post it on Slack, and even make it accessible somewhere on Research Hub itself, like about us page or I don't know, somewhere that you can report a bug. To do so, you need to do this, this, and that. And here are the links. And if you'll do that, you'll get 50 RSC. Because right now, you know, not a lot of people know how to do it. Yeah, I can definitely do that. I just drafted a Notion page uh, that I put in the chat here, which doesn't have like the exact instructions on how to go through GitHub and add an issue, but I can I can add some images and like screenshots showing that. Mm, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and obviously, like um, you know, the bug needs to be like a new bug and not like a, probably like a duplicate of an existing one. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll I'll put this like publicly too, but I, I think this is mostly for the people who are like uh, pretty involved in the project, who like we hopefully don't have to worry about spamming the the GitHub issues. Um, okay, cool. So another thing that I want to talk about is how do you guys feel about like the power user program so far? I'd love to hear like top overall thoughts. I have uh, results from the last week where um, Anton did seven posts, nine discussions. Uh, Nick, who had six posts, three discussions. And Philip had five and five. And uh, overall, I, I think that's pretty awesome. Like I said, uh, Brian specifically said that he thought that there was a lot more activity going on on the platform. And so while our weekly active users aren't up like a ton, like the discussions and posts are. So overall, we got a bunch of compliments because of that. So we'd love to hear what you guys think so far. It feels a little lonely, to be honest. Like at this point, I only interacted with Philip, and it was actually, you know, he pointed out that you know I maybe I 
was it was a little bit too clickbaity in the <laughs> editor titles, which is fine. But you know, it's kind of. I think maybe if it would be possible at all, maybe we can introduce some other type of thing power users can do, maybe like interacting with each other, like commenting each other's papers or trying to like reiterate someone's question, you know, not necessarily answer it because we might you know lack expertise, but at least respond to it, like cl clarify it or something, you know. Yeah, definitely. So you're saying add like another category of rewards that's like respond to someone else's comment? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because right now, you know, I was just uh, submitting interesting papers and was, it was weird to write a discussion starter questions. You know, I was like, oh, I wish people would discuss this with me. And then no one ever replies. So I kind of stopped at some point and I was, you know, just maybe summarizing or introducing a relevant concept or something like this, which is not maybe the, the best expected comment type. I don't know. OK, so maybe we could say, um, instead of just any type of comment, it could be um, a discussion starter and a paper and then a reply to a discussion starter. Yeah. What do you think uh, um, the reward size for that should be? I don't know, plus thirty percent if it's if it's a uh, you know a new type. We have two activities right now. It's going to be third activity. So wait, not plus thirty plus plus fifty percent. Wait. Okay, I'm a psychologist, not a mathematician. It's plus <laughs> plus fifty percent, right? <laughs> Yeah, we can definitely do that. I think that's uh, it definitely makes it a lot more fun to talk about. I know um, Brian posted a paper about longevity that George Church uh, did, where it was like uh, some new uh, like viral vector uh, to have multiple genes in a gene therapy. And um, Ari responded today. And so you're right, having like some back and forth, I think would definitely be worthwhile. Do you all have any other thoughts? I can add that to the reward structure and then we can do that for the next week. I'll also like publish a blog with this too, so that way we can hopefully get a few more people who are participating in it. What did we decide on the comment of the week voting thing? Because I've, now that I think maybe it doesn't, the comment of the week doesn't highlight, you know, us as a collective. It's a little bit maybe against the spirit of research hub. So what we can do is we can maybe establish, find the most interesting or prominent discussion thread, and you know award all you know everyone involved in the discussion thread you know equal share or however you're gonna split it. I love that. That's a, such a great idea. So we could do like like twelve hundred for the best discussion thread split through everyone who participates. That's an awesome idea. Does everybody feel good about that for the for the next week? Is there a way to get pinged by the activity by email? Because I honestly like don't check your such have every day. <laughs> so I just need to kind of like remind it to do the action. I'm happy to do so, but I completely missed out this opportunity. Yeah, we need the tagging system. Is it coming along? We could probably add it. Tagging, tagging in comments. Yeah, we can. The people in comments. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's probably gonna take us a week to build it. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could probably get it out in a week. I would say. I think that actually would be pretty cool because that would uh, to be able to add a person and then have them receive an email and say, "Hey, I want your opinion on this." You know, X person. Like that's that would definitely be a good way to get conversations going. Yeah, that's how that's how the conversations uh, typically start for me on other other social media. Like I rarely come in and just jump in with random people I don't know, someone usually summons me. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good idea. 
Nick, were you having trouble uh, getting into the Notion? I've got it uh, set to anyone on the internet, but if it's not working, I can. Uh, yeah, it's said, uh, I needed permission. Okay. I'll figure it out after the call and then send it to you in a DM. Cool. And so uh, the last thing I want to ch or chat about, and I think this is probably the most interesting, is uh, Nick, your idea when it comes to creating bounties um, for specific types of research. If you don't mind, I'd love to hear just kind of like your first top level thoughts on how that could potentially work. Yeah, so uh, my thought behind it was, uh, so if I, if I wanted to see uh, a certain articles about a certain topic um, that aren't read readily available on the site, uh, I could write uh, sort of a, a request or, or like um, announcement for someone to write about the topic. And then someone could uh, just submit it and get, um, get coins uh, as a reward. Uh, I was thinking sort of like the Stack Overflow bounty system, um, which has a lot to be desired in terms of incentives because pricing sometimes is not right. But um, in, in this case, uh, it, it's, we can do things uh, a little differently. So this, uh, this feels like it would fit pretty well with the hypothesis evidence graph we were talking about last week, where you could like ask a question and then put a bounty on it and have people like create, you know, mini review papers to answer that question, you know, with sources cited. Um, this is kind of interesting. There's a tool that I just posted in the chat here called BioMindMap. And the idea here is it's kind of like a manual way to track relationships between different things in biomedicine. Um, an example would be like um, exercise increases or decreases uh, like blood pressure, for instance. And so you can do this for like all kinds of different like compounds. Like you could say like, um, you know, blueberry or blueberries increase antioxidants or something like that. And um, I was chatting with the person behind this, and they had actually received bounties um, from people who just gave cash to their user base to say, like, hey, I want to learn about metformin. Like, teach me everything that metformin, you know, increases or decreases. And, like, there was actually demand from random people out there who just wanted to see, like, the biochemical relationships that exist from metformin. So um, th does... I'm curious, does that kind of seem similar to what you're asking? Like, it's, I guess this is kind of a complicated thing because I've always thought about it too, as in like, um, for instance, I want to see more meditation research. So I'd like to put $1,000 onto meditation as a whole field, you know, and just slightly increase the reward that might come out of anybody publishing anything around meditation. So like that's pretty different than what BioMindMap does and different than like putting a bounty on a specific question. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a rant there, but like lots of ways that this could be implemented. And I think a couple different ways where it could actually provide cool value to the scientific ecosystem as, in general. So yeah, curious what everybody else thinks. So I'm looking at this uh, BioMindMap and it's interesting, right? Because it's, they are they are providing clerical function, not scientific function. They are essential. Like there are two articles that support this claim. I don't know if they even like if you do open these articles, do you buy into this claim? Do, do you like do you like the method? Is it is it you know is providing the necessary evidence or, or something? I I have responded to Nicholas in Slack. And to be honest, like I am pro decentralization, but I think it's unreasonable to expect it to be like free market. Like the, you will, we will need some subcommittees or like some clusters of power users who will take on the responsibility to administrate this money. I, someone will need to do it, right? Because, because otherwise people will 
cheese the system so much, right? There will need to be real people looking into, you know, these requests and maybe people with experience in like research design. Like, for example, you wanted more research on meditation and health benefits, right? And, uh, you know, this, this committee will need to figure out how to even pose a, a research question that will allow you to answer this particular, you know, to find more evidence for meditation, right? Because, like, if imagine you'd be like, okay, I want, I want, I will give five, you know, 500,000 research coin to anyone who gives me solid proof that meditation has any health benefits. And, you know, and someone will just come in and be like, okay, hey, you meditate within an hour, healthy bowel moment. Okay, give me my money, give me my money, right? Because, you know, they satisfied the condition, right? And if you don't specify it like really in detail, might be might lead to uh, some unexpected results yeah maybe if the results fit into certain categories like like what we were talking about before uh, uh two weeks ago about a sort of like research paper category or post or a uh, conference proceeding or whatever so maybe dividing sort of what's expected as a result uh, that would like need to fit into that category. Uh, th the way I was thinking about this, so it, it's sort of in line with that website, uh, but also uh, like from a geographical standpoint, like if I wanted to see, there's a lot of papers on Lyme disease, but not enough in a certain geographical area. So uh, like, uh, information about Lyme disease in North Carolina, for example. So that that's where I was going uh, with this, but it, it could fit this other format as well. So do you want people to make a path, post where they list all the relevant research, or do you want them to travel to North Car Carolina and conduct the field research about it? Like like you could you could choose uh, basically uh, I want a research paper on this or I want a uh, good written post or a conference proceeding on this or uh, something along those lines or a data set uh, and sort of uh, the offshoot of this idea would be like sort of what Vita Dao does where where they have these sort of groups that decide where to uh, place funds on which type of research and and um, so basically when they complete when whomever decides to complete that research uh, they get an exchange for the IP they get uh, t uh, tokens so uh, perhaps not for research papers but for like data sets uh, I think it's mm -hmm. something that could be easily applied to are you, are you thinking maybe like like a suggested methods with a bounty attached where it's like hey here's the experiment that i want to see um you know anybody who creates data using these methods you'll get the bounty that's attached to it right something like that it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of what Open Science Framework did with their pre-registration uh, bounty, where they gave $1,000 to anybody who shared a pre-registration and then actually followed up with the data afterwards. So I could see a system where um, like maybe you create a bounty or like there's a crowdsourced bounty and then uh, some researcher says, hey, I'll do this experiment. They get like 30% of the funds up front or something. And then like at the other 70%, once they produce the data and the people who left the bounties are like, yeah, this is exactly what we wanted. Cool. Signed off. Wait, wait, wait. I think the devil is in details here. What do you mean by this experiment? If it's a perfectly described experiment with all the procedures, it has already been done. If it hasn't been done, it's probably not all the details are already specified, right? So the authors will have to interpret what you want from them. And your interpretation might not fit with what, what they will find, right? Or how will they will conduct it. So will you be free to be like, no, 
the, I don't like the outcome of this experiment. I'm not actually going to give you my my money. Or are you, are you obligated to do it? I think maybe we could borrow from Fast Grants, where they just said, hey, we want COVID research. And you have to send four paragraphs describing what you want to do. And then we'll send money to the people who do that. And I think they actually like had like checkpoints where like you had to send an update every month. And like when you sent that update, they would send like the next month's worth of funding or whatever. And so I, I could see a system where if Nick's like, hey, I want to learn about Lyme disease in North Carolina, um, it could be a call for potential, you know, experimental methods. And then Nick and all the other people who wanted that could get together, decide which one they wanted to fund, and then um, have some type of like, uh, like escrow fund releases as people provided updates to, you know, the data collection for the methods that they chose. That, that is perfect. However, this already implies the existence of this invisible expert who is reading these paragraphs and who is actually deciding whether you get, get the money or not. And we will need to somehow create an institution or some sort of strategy through which we will guide people into you know, nominating themselves as, as, as experts. And because, because otherwise, who knows, right? Who knows who promised what and whether it was delivered. Like, I don't have expertise in COVID. I don't know if the, the promise was delivered by the research group. I think what Nicholas actually said earlier, that it might be a post. I think it might be uh, easier and le less involving, you know, rich in infrastructure with experts and stuff. So what we can do is one of the type of the posts would be like, a request, a topic request. Like I would like someone to write a decent post, right? A review of these topics with with uh, all the uh, with all the I don't know citing the relevant research, answering this question with illustrations and everything. And what you can do is you kind of like you can freeze the amount of money of the research coin from your account. And you can't spend this research coin anywhere else from, uh, but uh, donate it to the topics that are, that will be, uh, to, to, to then the post that will try to answer your question. Like imagine there will be like 10 of them, right? Because people saw that you, you want like to share a million research coin. And then you can, it's up to you to decide whether you want to give it to all, all of them to one or spread them equally between the 10, but you can't spend them uh, elsewhere because you already promised, right? And other people can upvote your post and maybe add more money to this fund, right? I agree uh, with you, Anton, but only partly because like, if I would like, uh, for instance, Nicholas has a nice idea and me and my co-workers at the, at the lab, we think, oh, yeah, that's a nice idea. But then uh, some, some other group pops in and they go uh, and they receive all the funds and we wasted all our resources. And then it's like, ah, yeah, uh, if it's not like uh, really a contract, but still you, you invest quite a lot. And then in the end, you you end up empty-handed because maybe you you can't really publish the work you've done, and you don't get any funds from it. So okay, I, I, so you're saying that two 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 groups can start working simultaneously, and one finishes a little early and gets all the money, and the other one's like yeah, oh, oh. okay. So like, how would you like? Would you say like uh, first come first served? Like you right. can work on the idea first but then again yeah you don't really get m multiple yeah. people involved but on the other hand if you get multiple people involved then some people might end up like oh yeah i won't do this again how about it th how about there is going to be like two stages one is the i don't know bidding stage when like when people can add more money and enlist as like they want, they want to deliver. They want to write a post about it. By let's say it's a week, 
And by the end of the week, we have a total fund of money and we have however participants we have, right? So five, whatever. And what we can do is I think we can like basically split it. So let's say 50% of the funds are going to be distributed among these you know, five contenders, no matter what, right? Unless like the quality of like I don't, I don't know we involve judges and be like yeah no this is not good enough to even be considered a contestant but then the remaining 50 percent the requesters are free to give to whoever they liked most so so it takes best from both worlds right first no one's going to go no one's going to leave empty-handed but then we also give the people who who contribute money, this feeling of power and agency, right? That they can actually shape the landscape of science and which is, I think, the, the type of high where we will attract, right? This, this is a motivation of a typical funder in research hub, I think. I like this idea a lot because it seems like a really good uh, foot in the door to get into research grants, where if you're creating grants for like kind of small review papers, like you know, you can wrinkle out some of the issues to then eventually get to the point where you're creating grants for actual research projects. So it seems like a culture of like, hey, let me put a bounty on something I want in science. Like asking for research papers to answer a question is a great first step towards that. Cool. So we're a little bit over now. Do you guys have any, anything else for us for the next week? Just wanted to clarify something. So we're talking about this, and I really like the idea. Um, like pretty much everything was talked about is really interesting, but it is different. There, there are at least two different categories of ideas here, and I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So there is one category, which is here is some question I have. Uh, like, you know, like Joyce, the examples that you gave about blueberries, antioxidants or whatever related to the hypothesis, right? Draw from information that already exists, link to it, and uh, basically prove or disprove the claim. And then there is the other thing that we just talked about, which is here is a thing um, and you need to prove it by doing some kind of an experiment and publish some data set. And I'm not sure like I got it right. Just wanted to confirm that these are indeed two different categories. Yeah, the first one I think you can already implement today. Like if you have the necessary technology, you know, modifying this website. The second one needs to be fought through like extensively. I think right. the other people will need to be hired. Actual experts will need to be hired. You'll need to be on the payroll at least for the, for the, so for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. so the first one would be, uh, so instead of you finding uh, an article and then giving coins uh, to the author, uh, it would be the coins would be waiting for that person to, to upload that article. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, the, the second one's a separate one, but also um, along uh, and sort of the same idea. Mm -hmm. It sounded to me that you wanted right. it to be more than just upload an article, maybe create a post where you link, you know, like five, a dozen different articles and create a narration in which you guide the reader to, you know, be, you know, convinced by your point that, you know, meditation is a works, doesn't work or blueberries, you know, imp improve sight or something. <laughs> yeah, there could be like different combinations of uh, like requests. Yeah. And I think, Kobe, it, if we got number one right, we could create like mm -hmm. kind of a repeatable behavior that could lead to number two over time. Yeah, <clears throat> totally. Um, I'm thinking, so one thing that wasn't super clear, and I know we're over maybe like another couple of minutes. So let's say I click claim and uh, basically some people are going to like start linking to some scientific papers, and I know we can't choose like excerpts within the papers because that's like uh, a no-no. That's okay. So let's say they link to it, um, and uh, we touched on it, but I didn't quite get it 100%. How do we? Do you guys have any idea about like how do we verify that the linked paper 
actually supports or disproves the claim that was made? Like, uh, is it, because, you know, obviously people can game it. I can have like my own cohort be like, hey, come upvote my, my paper so I get some, some points or something like that. Uh, so someone applauded the uh, machine learning algor algorithm that's supposed to the cite it or whatever it's called. Yeah, mm -hmm. said, uh, on research hub recently, but they don't like even in science. It's it's a very prevalent pr problem. Like especially if there are like sixty citations in the introduction alone, no way people verify all of them. Even the reviewers, I guarantee reviewers do not click every single uh, citation and be like, oh, is this what's really written there? Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully, I think maybe we could keep it short for for the time being. Maybe like limit and not, not limit, but I think maybe propose that people share no more than like ten links in their discussion, mm -hmm. and then definitely leave the comments open so people can come in and and actually like that's not that's not what it says in citation number three. And maybe introduce some sort of like time period for which the awarded funds are going to be frozen. Maybe like you can't withdraw it. But yeah, you got it. Thanks for the review. But we'll, you know, we'll take like two weeks for users to skim through your stuff. And maybe if someone leaves a critical comment that you need to like rewrite it or adjust it, if you don't address it, you don't actually get the money or something, or get less. Mm hmm. So leave it up to vigilant users, basically. For, for users that like don't deliver, you could have like a rating system. So basically, if they, yeah, that's such a good idea. Thanks, Nicole. If they if they don't deliver three times, they get banned. Mm. Mm. Sorry, they don't deliver what? So the the claim was made. People post some stuff. What what? What do you mean by they don't deliver like three times? So, so let's say uh, they they just post an article uh, just to fulfill the upload and, mm -hmm. and get the coins. Uh, if the article doesn't really match what what the question is, right? Uh, then then they they get a low rating basically. Right, they actually lose. Yeah, yeah, some it, it's reactive, but like got it. It's, it would be effective in the short term. Yeah, maybe make it like a separate reputation, not not the upload mm -hmm. reputation from the same one, right? And I, I don't even know if you should ban them, but you know, the if you, if someone will request something else in the future, and they will see that one of the contenders has a negative billion rating, maybe they, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we have some veto process where you don't want people to be one of the contenders, you know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. That actually makes a lot of sense, and I think it does make sense to keep the reputation separate from like RSC and things like that. Got it. Yeah, it seems to fit really well with the future we're building this quarter. So I think uh, I think we could definitely get something like that in within the next couple of months. Cool. Does anybody else have anything else? We're about ten minutes over now. Like one small thing. Just uh, to close everything off, I like, uh, I, I think I've said it a couple of times, but uh, on the Bioman mind map, you see like the intro uh, on top. Uh, I like this kind of feature and I really think that's lacking on the research hub page. With the help page, it, it's too, too much of a hassle still to like get what research hub is all about. And when you click on the intro, it's just one page with some videos on them just briefly introducing what's all about i think i think that's really nice should have it on research up as well in my opinion wait where do you see it uh you mean the, sh the short abstract or what do they have it's like an about uh, like bio i just put the link in the message slash you see like if i or click intro. here oh. is it a guide page yeah. Oh, true. Oh, so this is a passive onboarding option, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it the videos that you like the most about this page? What is it specifically? Um, yeah, just everything in total. I don't like 
dozens of videos. I usually I just watch maybe one or two, but just a brief introduction. Uh, I mean, like when you go to research hub, you can click like create a new post or create or add a new paper. But why would I do so? Why? Uh, what's in it for me? What? What? Or why do the people want me to add a paper? Uh, how to do it? Uh, I know it's easy, but still, maybe just a sentence or two. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we discussed that, right? And we were considering options for onboarding. Yeah, it's still unclear why people should... Like, even, even the power power user thing, I think it's hard to discover, to be honest, to be honest with you. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. We could definitely include some more information there. One, um, and this may be a little bit too in the weeds, but uh, one perspective that people have here is if you have to explain your product, then it's not good enough. And so it should be as simple to use as possible where you don't need additional explanations in order for people to understand. Like, like if you guys are asking for us to make a video, that's more of a comment on we need to make Research Hub simpler and easier to understand in the UI then we should make a video is what some people think. But in general, I think science is more complicated than like Instagram or something like that. So maybe that doesn't necessarily apply to what we're trying to build, but there's sort of like two perspectives there of like, if people are asking for more information, it's because it's not easy enough to use yet, but we could also provide the information. And if we get growth because of that and more buy-in from people, you know, you know, there's no hard and fast rules. So it's, it definitely could be valuable. I see. So in ideal world, the interface is so intuitive. You don't yeah. even need a page like that. Exactly. Uh, how about like right now, the incentive, like getting, um, earning research coin is not something people, I think, learn how to do easily. How about if you remake the new post button in the top right and make it like earn research coin. And then if you click it, it's going to unfold into create a post, create a, upload the research paper, create a, like post a comment, maybe add it as, I don't know what it's going to lead to. Maybe it's going to lead to like browser of latest activity or like something. So basically you need a list of every single thing you can do on the website to earn research coin. And it should be like next to each other to mentally make sense, I think. Yeah, I agree. I, I think there's definitely a way to make it more obvious what the benefits are for people to add content to Research Hub. There's a couple of ways we could probably go about that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll chat internally, though, and see if there's something that we can come up with. Cool. Um, yeah, so thank you guys again for this extra time, too. I think this is all super valuable feedback. Um, does anybody else have anything else before we sign off? Cool. Until next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye.